Welcome back to another video brought to you by CADmodelingHub.com. It's part of our series, Engineering Design, Modeling, and Graphics. This video, entitled, What are Precise Dimensions, will discuss and cover the topics of learning the meaning, of precision as it relates to length measurements and learning how uh, precise dimensions are applied to location and size dimensions on an engineering drawing. Many of us have heard um, such things as first and ten or a hundred meter dash or a two before or a four by four. Some of us may have even heard of angstroms as they relate to visible light. <clears throat> All of these are different length measurement scales. We have yards, we have meters, we have inches, we have millimeters, and we have angstroms. In this particular video, we talk about precision as it relates to length measurements. For example, on a football field, rarely do you hear that they have a half an inch to go for a first down. You may hear the commentator say there's inches before a first down, or there is a yard before the first down, but you don't generally hear them say, oh, they have a yard and two inches to go for a first down. So we want to take a few minutes and talk about different length measurements for different engineering groups. If we consider length measurements for civil engineers, we can very quickly think about what civil engineers do. Well, they design chemical plants and refineries. And it's not uncommon to have a refinery uh, that can cover many square miles. For example, there are some refineries that cover 11 square miles or approximately 30 million square meters. Civil engineers also design bridges. Sometimes a single span of a bridge will be unsupported for lengths of up to a mile or approximately 2,000 meters. Civil engineers also design the structure of such things as aircraft carriers and airplanes. An aircraft carrier is something like uh, 1,100 feet or 340 meters. Or the 787 is merely 180 feet from tip to tail or about 60 meters. So what are precise dimensions for an oil refinery or precise dimensions on an aircraft carrier or an airplane? They're probably fairly large uh, increments or fairly large uh, values for the precision of a given uh, dimension because the dimensions are so large. But if we were dealing with a single component inside of the airplane wing, then we're going to be dealing with much shorter lengths and those shorter lengths can be more precise. In the area of chemical engineers, yes, chemical engineers design large refineries and the process that goes through the large refineries, but they also dem 
deal with length scales on the molecular or atomic reaction kind of scale. Electrical engineers deal with very large power grids. They also deal with very, very small trans transistors. Uh, just recently in 2017, we learned that Intel was able to pack a hundred million transistors in every square millimeter of a chip. We have examples here of the power grid that supports the uh, Three Gorges Dam in China. We also have an example of a printed circuit board that would be represented in inches or millimeters. And then we have a quarter by eighth millimeter surface mount ferrite bead chip that is located at the end of that mechanical pencil. So again, engineers work in many different scales. Well, what about the length measurements that mechanical engineers use? Typically, those length measurements are in terms of inches or millimeters. But we should note that engineer, mechanical engineers also support and build or design very large systems. Uh, for example, uh, if they're building or helping to design the fastest train in the world, that train is able to go the distance of a mile in about 10 seconds, or a Gerald R. Ford aircraft carrier or a Boeing 787, or large uh, wind turbines, larger than, than the largest Ferris wheel that exists, those um, large systems will use dimensional scales different than inches and millimeters. They'll use feet or meters to uh, to call out the lengths of these uh, different designs. So yes, we can go to larger length scales, but mechanical engineers also deal with much smaller length scales when they begin talking about the surface roughness or the surface texture of a particular part. They'll use either micro inches or uh, microns. And here's just an example of the relationship between a human hair. So the image at the right has a purple circle and that purple circle represents a human hair that has been scaled 2,000 times. If we want to talk in terms of a thousandth of an inch, that's the big blue dot that's uh, inside that purple circle. If we want to talk about a ten thousandth of an inch, then we talk in terms of the green dot inside of this circle that represents the hair. And if we want to talk in terms of a micron, or a thousandth of a millimeter, then we are talking the size of the red dot at the bottom of that purple circle. So when we're talking about dimensions, dimensions represent kind of the, the nominal or the ideal length or the ideal dimension, but because we cannot make anything perfect to a perfect dimension, we have to talk about a range 
of acceptable lengths or acceptable locations, acceptable sizes, that we are willing to call good or good enough in our design. So here we have a drawing that has a number of dimensions on it and we need to talk about are these dimensions precise and we need to kind of discuss what we mean by precise. So let's look first at the two decimal place dimensions and ask the question, are these dimensions precise? When we speak of precise, we're asking how close is close enough to say the one inch dimension. Well, that one inch dimension, according to our design, has to be made within a tolerance or a precision of plus or minus three hundredths of an inch. So we can make that one inch dimension either as a point nine seven or anything up to one point zero three. So anything in that range we would call good. If we look for a moment at the 1.25 dimension, that dimension has to be made within a range of 1.22 or up to a measurement of 1.228. And anything in that range would be considered a precise dimension as long as it falls within that range. What about the angular dimension? It shows here as 135 degrees. Is that dimension precise? Well, again, we have to look at the tolerance band to find out how tight of a um, or how precise of a dimension that 135 degrees is. And in this case, it's plus or minus 2 degrees, which when you think about it, uh, 2 degrees, in this case a total of 4 degrees, um, is probably not very precise, but for an angle it's not too bad. So this angle could be made as small as 133 degrees or as large as 137 degrees. Here we have, happen to have a limit style dimension and it is precise within a tolerance band of 10 thousandths of an inch or a hundredth of an inch and so this tolerance is much tighter than any of the two place dimensions and so it is a much more precise and therefore a much more costly dimension to actually manufacture. Here we have a bilateral, bilateral tolerance. The bilateral tolerance says that this number has to be made uh, plus or minus five thousandths of an inch. And so again, it has a tighter tolerance than in two place dimensions have. So both this uh, diameter dimension that's a limit style and this bilateral dimension have the same kind of precision or tolerance band and both of these would be more costly dimensions to make and manufacture. So that concludes our discussion on kind of precision. We'll talk more about tolerancing and more about kind of precision, but every dimension has to be 
specified as to how precise to actually make it since we can't manufacture anything perfectly. As we conclude this lecture, let's talk for just a minute about how does one control the precision of an inch dimension? One controls the, uh, the um, precision of an inch dimension by specifying an appropriate tolerance for each dimension length or location does not matter. It just needs to make sure that there is a tolerance an appropriate precise tolerance covering each dimension. In this lecture we've seen three different ways of doing tolerances either with a note that covers a number of tolerances or by a limit style tolerance or by a bilateral uh, associated plus or minus tolerance. For covering the tolerance of a metric, you do it the exact same way. You specify a note with a metric tolerance or a limit wherein you've specified two metric values or you do it with a bilateral plus or minus metric value. And tight tolerances mean very precise. They have to be made very accurately. And a much uh, looser or wider tolerance is less precise and therefore less costly to manufacture. I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this presentation. Make sure you subscribe to cadmodelinghub.com on YouTube and visit me at my website which is also uh, cadmodelinghub. Thanks!